hey guys what's up and welcome back to the channel if you are new here do consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this now today i'm going to be taking you behind the scenes of how i create a seamless product photo like you'd see on instagram so an image like this i'm going to be taking you behind the scenes of how i shot this how i shoot this and also the editing process so without further ado let's jump right into it and i'm going to show you how i took the photograph that would then become this pattern Right now, so this is the setup here and this is the shot that we're looking to achieve. We have everything in position. It's properly exposed. Um, it's just ready to go. Now I'm gonna start by saying that you can shape this shadow exactly how you want it. If you want it long, if you want it off center, uh, let's just show that in motion right here. So for example, if we move this light, naturally we're gonna have the shadow moving around. So if we wanted to have it up slightly a bit uh, or down, we can move that. If we want it also to elongate the shadows, for example, if we were to move the light source further away, we can do that and you bring it up to bring the shadow back in. Now, the other thing to think about is how dark and crispy do you want to have your shadow? Now, this lighting right here is a single point LED and it has no modifiers on it. So it's just the bare bulb as such with a single cob LED and it's just uh, shooting out one single beam of light and that helps you to retain quite a sharp edge on the shadows. Now you don't want to do this with a softbox attached because this is the effect that you're going to get. For example if you had any sort of diffusion uh, it's just going to soften the shadow area. So you can see the, the, the edges are now fuzzy so unless that is the look that you're actually going for you want to keep uh, the light as hard as possible now as you can see from this setup i'm shooting top down and i'm shooting just on any plain white surface now personally i could work with what i'm seeing here um, and again if you just wanted to tweak it a little bit more for example you wanted to bring a little bit more light onto this shadow area here we can just you know bring a bounce card in there just to lighten that up but as you can see whilst we do that it is also affecting the shadow so the shadow is not as dark or as deep and now you can darken that back in your editing software if you wanted to or you can just take a composite shot so you take two shots one to expose for the uh, fill in here using this card and you take another shot with this and then you just blend the two images in photoshop now if that is the only product that you're going to be showing in the final image then you're pretty much good to go into the editing suite from here um, however in this case we have a couple of sister products which we are just going to quickly shoot the same process going to just replace one for one in the same positioning so the lighting is pretty much the same and the shadows are in the same positions and then we're going to take that over into the editing suite okay so now we are over in photoshop we've opened up our image here and we see we've got a single layer just here and what we're looking to do right now is to isolate this so what we're going to do is select it one of the quickest ways to do this is using the object selection tool just draw around the object and that will try its best to select your object for you and that's done a pretty good job but what you want to do now is to go in and inspect this a little bit more just to make sure that it has captured everything obviously it's trying to compute this edge but because it's a little bit blown out um, it kind of missed it so you can then choose the quick selection tool and just add this edge here to the selection right and as i say you go around this shape and you inspect it make sure it's captured everything that you want to capture in there so now you've done this you're going to select and mask this and you're going to refine the mask so that is let me just go back there so using the select and mask up at the top here you hit that button and you get to refine the edges on here so i mean you know you can just kind of smooth the edges out a little bit and i take it up to about five in my case and about 0 0.6 on the feather so i'm feathering the edges a little bit so that it can blend into whatever background that i'm you know gonna put it on you know and you can do a lot of fine tuning within this panel here just to get your selection just right but i'm going to be okay with that for the purposes of this and now we have a selection here all we're going to do is right click on here and we're going to create a layer via copy 
so we can see what is done if we were to turn off this background layer we can see now this is uh, a transparent this has a transparent background and that's kind of what we are going for now you can get rid of your background layer for now and the second thing that we're going to do in here is to do some quick cleaning up so i'm using the brush healing tools uh, in this process here just to go through and just quickly clean up anything that needs cleaning up and you can go in on this as far or as much as you can just make sure you just don't have anything obvious that needs to be removed in this case and this is the process where you do it you want to do it now because when you duplicate this you don't want to be retouching sort of six copies of this as opposed to just the original one all right uh, so now that I've done the tidying up and if you do want to tweak any coloring or anything like that on this This is the point where you do it, but I'm ready for the next step now. I'm just going to crop this as is and I'm just going to Refine the crop a little bit. Just give it an extra little breathing space around the edges and That should do nicely if I press enter that is my selection. And as I say, if you have more than one different images or different products, you would go ahead and do exactly the same for those other three. What I'm gonna do here now is just make sure I have that layer selected. I'm gonna come up to edit and I'm gonna define pattern. So when you go to define pattern, this dialog box comes up and you're gonna name it. So I'm going to name this as in this case, vitamin C, I already have one in there. So vitamin C2 and hit OK. So I'm going to explain what's going to happen here in a second. So now I have that and that is a defined object that I'm going to use to create a pattern. OK, so now let's go ahead and create a new document. So we're going to go up to File, New and you're going to get a dialog box, uh, create a new document. I'm going to just make this into a square 1920 by 1920 pixels and we'll create that. So you get a blank document here where you can start to work on. All right, so all I'm going to do is come down here and create a new fill layer. So I'm going to fill that with a pattern. So that will bring up this dialog box. This is one of the patterns that is already, that's a default pattern that comes with the program. So what we're going to do is select the pattern that we have just created. And if we were to choose that one, we see that we have a pattern here. Now, now this is where we have to refine this. Um, two things that we can affect here is the scale and this will determine how many so if we just set this for example to 50 percent we can see it's uh, created more and you can also change the angles by adjusting this parameter right here so in this case based on the size of the product as well to make sure that you can actually see this when it's on you know a square instagram feed you want to make sure you have at least maybe one or two of these bottles in full view so i'm going to just take this up at least uh, let's see 70 percent and see what that does okay there we have it and i know i'm going to be able to see at least one of this product in its entirety on that screen and you can tweak that as much as you like now that's probably the most simplified way or the most simple method of doing this and you can actually do this to create a more unique effect and like i said i have two other products within that range that i'm going to use so this is one of them and the next one and the third one and all i've done is just place these layers in here and you know sort of line them up on the square where i wanted to line them up the next thing what i'm going to do is to group those layers as i've done right here and then i'm going to duplicate that group by pressing command j command j duplicates the group if we press back on the v or the move tool then you can just move that group or copy that group and you can place it wherever you want you can off center it you know if you, if you like um, and you can create another copy of that and just keep moving these around until you kind of fill up this this square in a manual fashion you have these guidelines that you can also use to help you to line these up and you would eventually come to something like this which is whatever uh, created earlier if you look at my uh, layer panels you can see how many groups i have at least 12 copies of the three of them and just placed on this canvas right so what i'm going to do now is to just create a copy of all of these what i'm going to do, do is turn the background off because i don't want to transfer that i'm going to turn the background off i'm going to go to the top layer and press shift option command and e and that will create a new layer of everything 
uh, that is combined every all of the visible layers will be created into a combined layer right at the top next thing we want to do is create another new document we'll go ahead and do that that's now <laughs> called untitled 5 uh, gotta keep track of this so what we're going to do is send this layer this top layer over here by pressing duplicate layer and the destination will be untitled 5 which is what we just created so if we go back to untitled 5 now we have this layer we can turn it off we can turn it on and that new document has got a white background so now if we were to just zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're working with this layer at the top we can resize that so that we can have more or less of these products in view so what i want to do because i know the intention is to place this on uh, an instagram feed and it's going to be on a mobile phone screen so you don't want to make it too small that you can't really see it i want to have at least three of these products in full view so i'm going to place that about right there hit enter and that's where i'm going to sort of leave that and you can you like i say you can position this around any way that you feel like what you can also do at this point is change your background color if you don't want it to be white you can change that to any other color again come down here to your um, adjustment layers you select solid color and i'm going to go for uh what should we go for sort of a light blue a really light blue let's go for that select the light blue hit ok and now we have a new background color in there and that is essentially the editing process behind this image and that is it from me for today guys if you enjoyed this smash the like button and do leave a comment below if you have another method or if you've seen another method of doing this please leave it in the comments below that'll help our community so much and i'll see you guys on the next video peace